Are you ready? Because this is the best video on YouTube for an activation for serratus anterior. It might not be the best quality, uh, I'm a bit amateur at the video uh, editing, uh, and I'm driving right now, so this is the time I have because it's the plight of a wandering yogi. But this video, this technique for serratus anterior is super important because it is the primary muscle for, muscle for inhalation other than the diaphragm. And so often, uh, people are trying to stretch their pec minor to get more space in the rib cage to be able to breathe deeper. And if you try to stretch pec minor without engaging serratus anterior, for most people, you end up pinching the front of the shoulder, overstretching anterior deltoid, other anatomy terms that basically this is a wonderful activation for almost everyone. It's gonna feel wonderful, and so I hope you enjoy, and definitely share and subscribe to the channel. Peace. Hey, so this is a video on the serratus anterior activation, an isolated activation. And, you know, a lot can be said about this muscle and any muscle. It's connected to so many other muscles in the body. Through fascia, directly, it's connecting to a lot of bones. Serratus anterior, for example, if you'll notice, and on this image, uh, which is highly modified from a book called The Concise Book of Muscles by Chris Jarman. Uh, on the left image, you'll see a dashed line and some red, kind of uh, just highlighted red lines. These are the origin and attachments of the muscle. You know, a muscle is attaching at least at two places, that's, and it contracts and it pulls those two places closer together. So notice that this is on the medial border which is the side of the scapula, which is the shoulder blade. It's the side of the shoulder blade that's closest to the spine. That's the medial border on the anterior side, which is the front side, which means it's on the part of the scapula that's actually between the shoulder blade and the rib cage. The front of the scapula, but it's still behind the rib cage, which is why it's a very interesting sensation to engage it, to isolate it. We engage it all the time, but we don't really isolate it. The purpose of an isolation is to be able to bring more balance to the muscle. Uh, if just simply engaging it, a lot of different muscles can accomplish similar movements in the body. And so to simply have someone do a movement, uh, let's say a symmetric movement on one side or the other, let's say it's a protraction of the arm, they're just pushing their arm forward. They can be using other muscles on one side versus the other. So the left side, maybe they use more serratus anterior, but the right side, they use more anterior deltoid and pec minor or something like that. And over time, that pattern will solidify, meaning the muscle will actually become more rigid and hard, and the shoulder girdle will rotate on the spine. This is one uh, um, indication of scoliosis, or it's an indicator, it's, a, it's a, something you can visually see that indicates scoliosis, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. Everybody has some twist, rotation, and side bend in their spine and their body. Uh, and like a boxer, for example, that's always turning their body. They don't have scoliosis necessarily, but their shoulder girdle is probably rotated on their spine. Or anybody that uses their arms asymmetrically. I myself was a wrestler, and a lot of martial artists, or uh, like wrestlers, you lead with one side of the body more than the other. And so the body tends to rotate in different directions. The hips are rotated relative to the spine. The shoulder girdle is rotated relative to the spine, and so on. And this creates uh, sometimes discomfort or pain and especially as you get older and the muscles become more solidified, it's a l more difficult to change the pattern. The younger you are, the softer your body is. When we can start to address these, the easier it is to correct and repattern your body. Because once you end doing sports, once you, s sports, once you stop doing martial arts very physically, eventually you're going to want some symmetry. When you finally lay down on your deathbed and you're just kind of symmetric, you're gonna, it's going to be much more comfortable and easeful if your body is symmetric versus one side's clinching more than the other, which is what's going to happen. Not to be gloomy, but that's just kind of what happens. So if you look at the uh, other attachments, it's going to be on the lateral border of these ribs and intercostals. Ribs one through nine, basically. Some people it's one through eight, one through nine. And so when the muscle contracts, it pulls the anterior medial border of the scapula towards the lateral borders of the ribs. You'll feel what I'm describing now as we go through the videos. But definitely do memorize this image. I want you to be, because you're not going to look at the computer, you're going to listen to me while I'm talking to you. So memorize this image, burn it into your mind so that when you're laying on your back to do this isolation I'm about to guide you through, you can clearly see this muscle 
and you can start to connect the image of the muscle to what you're feeling in your body, uh, which is union, that's yoga. You're bringing your mind and your body. Okay, so you feel the serrat edge of it, the serrate, it's like a sawtooth, that's why it's got its name, serratus anterior, serratus anterior. And you're pushing the back of the wrist down and the elbow lifts up slightly. This pulls the scapula around to the side of the ribs. And you can feel higher towards the armpit. And you can feel the lat muscle, make sure the lat is soft. We're not engaging the lat. On the other side, it's similar. You just, first you find the serrate edge of the muscle in the lower ribs. It's the easiest place to find the muscle. And as you move the hand higher into the armpit, it's more difficult to isolate or to feel the engagement of those muscle fibers, so muscle bundles. So that's just where the practice goes, is more difficulty and make sure you feel the lat is soft. And then it's very important that the back of the shoulder stays soft. So when we're doing this motion, check and make sure the back of the shoulder stays soft. It's the elbow up, wrist down component. The back of the deltoid stays soft, the trapezius, and all the other rotator cuff muscles. You can actually physically lift the elbow will help to find the engagement. Once you find the engagement, you don't need to continue lifting the elbow. If you ever lose the engagement, then lift the elbow. It'll help you find it. So to give you an idea, this is what it looks like overhead. Relax the legs. It's very important to relax the legs. If it's uncomfortable for the back, you can bend the knees and bring the feet wide, knock the knees together. But I always recommend the legs straight and relaxed. The higher the bundles that you're feeling up in the armpit, the deeper the realization of the activation, but those are more tricky to find. So the lower bundles are a good starting place. And definitely do reach across and make sure the back of the shoulder that you're engaging is soft. When serratus is engaged and isolated, everything else should be soft. Go ahead and switch sides. Ideally, you do an equal number of repetitions to both sides. You'll have a strong side and a weak side. Uh, one side will be easier to relax than the other. This is very common. And maybe if you work with a teacher, they might suggest that you do your weak side more to strengthen it. But eventually, you're going to want to come into equality. The body will naturally bring symmetry to itself. Uh, the, the weak side will catch up if you just do equal amount to both sides. Check the back of the shoulder. Be sure that it's soft. And maybe give it a shot trying both at the same time. So it's like you're popping your wings out, almost like a bodybuilder. This is serratus interior. And this is a good uh, form. Remember this form when we do a rhomboids isolation activation. This is a good precursor for that. And now we also have to conclude with the final suggestion that you practice this every day for at least three weeks. The best time to practice is right when you wake up, you do your bathroom thing, you roll over, you do some serratus activation. In the future, I'll post more videos so you can add to your activation sequence, uh, which will, there's so many benefits, I'll go into that, into that into a different video because this video is already long enough. All right, namaste, ninth limb.